Friends, welcome to the tutorial series on Module YGC Network Analysis Paper Solution. In this tutorial, we are going to solve Module 2 of VTU CBCS Scheme Network Analysis Paper of December 2016, January 2017 of syllabus 15 EC34. Friends, I prefer to emphasize on concepts, strategies and thinking process before you start solving the question rather than detailed mathematical steps. I am sure you are well equipped with mathematical skills. Hope you will enjoy the travel. Let's go ahead. Friends, first let us take up a question on maximum power transfer theorem. I suggest you read the question carefully, think and decide the strategy of answering and then proceed to solve. The question goes like this. State and prove the maximum power transfer theorem for AC circuits. But in AC circuits, load will be complex. It may consist only resistance or the combination of resistance and reactance part. If the load is complex, only resistance part of the load may vary or only reactance part of the load may vary or both may vary. The condition for the maximum power transfer across the load will be different for each type of load. So, before you start writing the answer, you have to mention for which load you are deriving the condition. So, let us first decide the assumptions. 1. Source is AC, source voltage is Vs and will remain constant. Source impedance is complex, let Zs is equal to Rs plus Jxs, which also will remain constant. Load impedance ZL is equal to Rl plus Jxl and both Rl and Xl are varying. The circuit diagram drawn is shown in figure. To find the equation for the maximum power transferred, we need to find IL first. Let IL be the load current as shown in figure. So, IL is equal to Vs divided by Rs plus Jxs plus Rl plus Jxl and that is equal to Vs divided by Rs plus Rl plus Jxs plus Xl. Hence, mod of IL is equal to Vs divided by square root of Rs plus Rl whole square plus Xs plus Xl whole square. To find the condition for a maximum power transferred, first let us assume that only Xl as varying. We get the circuit shown in figure. We know IL is equal to Vs divided by square root of Rs plus Rl whole square plus Xs plus Xl whole square. But power P is equal to mod of IL squared into Rl. You know power in AC circuit is consumed only in resistance part of the load. So P is equal to Vs squared divided by Rs plus Rl whole square plus Xs plus Xl whole square into Rl. This can be written as Vs squared which is constant into Rl divided by Rs plus Rl whole square plus Xs plus Xl whole square. Now, to find the condition for maximum power transferred, first let us find dp by dxl and equate it to 0. Hence, dp by dxl is equal to denominator into the differentiation of the numerator minus numerator into the differentiation of the denominator divided by denominator square. You know this is u by v form. So, by equating dp by dxl equal to 0 and solving, we get xl is equal to minus xs. By substituting the value of xl in the equation of power, we get p is equal to vs squared into 
RL divided by RS plus RL square. Now, by using RL as varying and finding dp by drl and equating it to 0, we get RL is equal to RS. So, when both RL and XL are varying, we get ZL is equal to RS minus JXS. But you know, ZS is equal to RS plus JXS. So, we can write the condition for the maximum power transfer in this case is ZL is equal to ZS conjugate. Therefore, the maximum power transfer theorem for AC circuits can be stated as when the source is AC and the source impedance is complex and the load impedance also is complex, if both resistance and reactance part of the load are varying, the condition for maximum power transferred across the load is ZL is equal to ZS conjugate. Hope you got the skill of writing the answer for such a question. Friends, in this problem, we are required to find Thevenin's equivalent circuit as seen from the terminals P and Q. The problem is very easy but very tricky. I prefer to bring out the strategy and thinking process first. Observe the given network. Terminals P and Q are open and Vx is the voltage across these terminals. Because terminals P and Q are open, no current will flow through 3K resistance. So, voltage appearing across dependent current source of Vx by 4000 is Vx. The circuit contains one practical voltage source of 4 volts in series with 2K resistance. It also contains one voltage controlled current source of Vx by 4000 amperes. So, to find Thevenin's equivalent circuit seen from the terminals P and Q, we have to find VOC and IAC and find R Thevenin using R Thevenin is equal to VOC upon IAC. Now, to find VOC, the circuit redrawn is shown in figure. By writing the nodal equation for the node Vx, we get Vx minus 4 divided by 2k minus Vx divided by 4000 is equal to 0. Note, current through 3k resistance is 0. By solving, we get 2Vx minus 8 minus Vx is equal to 0 and Vx is equal to Vvoc is equal to 8 volts. So, V7 is equal to 8 volts. To find the short circuit current ISC, the circuit drawn by short circuiting P and Q terminals is shown in figure. Since P and Q are short circuited, Vx is equal to 0 and the source current Vx by 4000 also will become 0. Note that. Hence, Current source behaves as open. The circuit incorporating these aspects is shown in figure. Therefore, ISC is equal to 4 divided by 5k amperes. So simple, isn't it? Hence, R Thevenin is equal to VOC upon ISC and that is equal to 8 divided by 4 into 5k which will give us 10k. Therefore, Thevenin's equivalent circuit as seen from the terminals P and Q can be drawn as shown in figure. Friends, is it not simple? Friends, next we shall take up the question on Milman's theorem. We are required to state and explain Milman's theorem. The answer is straightforward. First, let us write the statement. Milman's theorem is named after Jacob Milman, a professor of Columbia University. It is a procedure of transforming the number of parallel connected voltage sources into a single voltage source in series with the equivalent impedance as shown in figure. Let me explain. Consider the circuit shown in figure in which 
n number of generators each of voltage v1 v2 v3 etc to vn having the respective internal resistances r1 r2 r3 etc to rn as shown in figure according to melman's theorem the circuit shown can be transformed into a single voltage source across the load rl as shown where v equivalent is the equivalent voltage and r equivalent is the equivalent resistance so according to melman's theorem v equivalent can be written as is equivalent to summation of vi gi divided by summation of gi where i goes from 1 to n meaning v equivalent is equal to v1 g1 plus v2 g2 plus etc plus vn gn divided by g1 plus g2 plus g3 etc plus gn we know gi is equal to 1 upon ri where r i goes from 1 to n let's provide the proof the proof of milman's theorem can be obtained by converting each voltage source into equivalent current source then we get i1 is equal to v1 by r1 i2 is equal to v2 by r2 etc and in is equal to vn by rn and i equivalent is equal to i1 plus i2 plus i3 etc plus in by substituting we get i equivalent is equal to v1 by r1 plus v2 by r2 plus etc plus vn by rn hence i equivalent is equal to v1 g1 plus v2 g2 plus etc plus vn gn i equivalent can be written as i equivalent is equal to summation of vi into gi where i goes from 1 to n and r equivalent is equal to 1 upon g equivalent where g equivalent is equal to g1 plus g2 plus etc plus gn but v equivalent is equal to i equivalent into r equivalent and that is equal to i equivalent into 1 upon g equivalent so v equivalent can be written as summation of vi gi divided by summation of gi thus the milman's theorem is proved friends finally we shall take up the problem on reciprocity theorem verifying the reciprocity theorem we mean we have to find the response vx in the given circuit then interchange the positions of the excitation and response and find the response vy for the exchanged circuit and if vx is equal to vy then the reciprocity theorem is proved so first let us find vx consider the circuit shown in figure by observing the network it is seen that two impedances one of 5 plus j5 and the other of 2 minus j2 are in parallel across a current source of phi angle 90 amperes so by using parallel branch theorem or current division theorem we get ix is equal to impedance of the other branch phi plus j5 divided by sum of the two parallel branch impedances phi plus j5 plus 2 minus j2 into total current phi angle 90 amperes by solving we get ix is equal to 4.642 angle 111.8 amperes but vx is equal to ix into minus j2 by substituting for ix and solving it we get vx is equal to 9.284 angle 21.8 volts now by interchanging the positions of the excitation and response we get the circuit shown in figure note the current source of phi angle 90 is introduced across minus j2 capacitor such that it will drive the current in the capacitor from top to bottom as in the original network 
also not the two parallel branches across the current source now are one of minus j2 and the other of 2 plus 5 plus j5 and very important response phi y is the voltage across the impedance phi plus j5 so again by applying parallel branch theorem we get i y is equal to impedance of the other branch minus j2 divided by sum of the two parallel branch impedances phi plus j phi plus 2 minus j2 into total current phi angle 90. By solving it we get i y is equal to 1.313 angle minus 23.2 amperes. But phi y is equal to i y into phi plus j phi by substituting for i y and solving we get phi y is equal to 9.284 angle 21.8 volts which you see that phi x is equal to phi y therefore the reciprocity theorem is verified friends hope you identified some of the thinking processes and approaching skills to write the answers for the given questions. If this tutorial has ignited some of your thoughts, please forward your feedback and suggestions to my email. Thank you for watching this video.